Welcome to the homework for lesson 23. We're in module 5 of grade 3. Please write your name here first. It says, on the number line above, use a colored pencil to divide each hole into thirds and label each fraction above the line. So this is, this really, this whole homework uh, assignment is really about paying really close attention to detail, especially in reading the directions. So just be aware that this is especially true. It's always true, but it's especially true on this one. Um, I've had to make this video over, uh, I think, three different times because I just wasn't reading the directions right, and I had to slow down and do things over again. So um, I'm going to use a green one on the top. So each hole into thirds. So here's there's a hole that's going to... I'm going to chop that one into thirds, and this hole into thirds, and this one into thirds, and then label each fraction above the line. So I'm going to start with zero thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds, and you can see how this is going to go. Four thirds, I'm just counting thirds. All right, so let me, let me just finish labeling all the thirds. And I got all the way to nine thirds. So that's done and it's above the line. Number two, this is going to be below the line with a different colored pencil, if you have it. Divide each hole into sixths and label each fraction below the line. So six, I'll do like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I make marks halfway in between the thirds and then also mark the thirds, I'll have sixths. All right, and I'll label all of these. Zero, sixths, one, sixths, two, sixths, and this is going to keep going. So it'll take a while. There. Uh, now each fraction is labeled below the line. Now that the hardest part about this writing all these sixths out is number one, writing small enough that you can fit them all in there. And uh, the other thing that's hard, um, it may not think it's hard, but a lot of times um, you make you may find you make a mistake if you got to a number higher than eighteen for a numerator for your sixths. It's because you skipped a number somewhere in here. So if you didn't get to 18, you got to a number less than 18, you might have written down the same numerator twice. Uh, if you got to a number higher than 18 for your numerator for the sixth, you may have written, you may have skipped uh, a number in the sequence of numerators. And you can see it's just, we're just counting six. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to 18. And then it says, write um, here, write the fractions that name the same place on the number line. So we're looking at these. It looks like all the thirds are going to match up with a sixth. Which makes it, it makes sense since it takes two sixths to make a third. They should all end up. And you'll notice what happens here, that um, since six is twice as much as two, the numerators will be twice as much. So one third will be two sixths, and two thirds will be four sixths, and three thirds will be six sixths. So when you look at the numerators for the six, you're counting by twos for the ones that I've circled. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And I'm just going to write down all of those 0 thirds equals 0 sixths. 1 third equals 2 sixths. I'm going to separate them with commas. I'm going to have a lot of them to write down there. And I just want to point out, you don't have to circle these numbers the way I'm going to do it, but if you look at the thirds, 
right, you're looking at zero. The numerators for the third, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are all counting by ones. And then if you look at the numerators for the six, it's zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. And each numerator for the six is twice as much as its counterpart for the thirds. Just a little pattern you might notice. Using your number line to help, that's this one up here, name the fraction equivalent to 26 sixths. Name the fraction equivalent to 12 thirds. So they have that set up for you here and there. Oh, I gotta change my marker. Draw the part of the number line that would include these fractions below and label it. Okay, so we left off here at the end with 9 thirds and 18 sixths. So let's pick up there. Right, we had 9 thirds and then below we had 18 sixths. And then we just want to continue this line a little bit longer. So we have, let's give ourselves some room between the thirds here because we got to fit a sixth, sixth in between. So that's going to be 10 thirds and then 11 thirds and then 12 thirds. And our sixths are going to be, right, we're going to include the thirds because every two is going to be another sixth. Let's give me another third. So then we have 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 sixths. So 20 sixths, that's right here, that's going to be 10 thirds. And 12 thirds, that's here, that matches up with 24 sixths. Now, this one also is uh, tricky. Uh, write two different fraction names for the dot on the number line. It looked, it might not look too bad because it's a lot like the first page where we're working above and below on the same number line. But watch out for this. We're starting out with zero and one for endpoints, but then it's one and two. So when you get down to these second ones, be, watch out for that because it's going to change where you start counting your fractions. You don't always start at zero on these number lines. You have to look at the endpoints. So don't miss that part. Two different fraction names for the dot on the number line. Well, this fraction line here has one, two, has three equal parts. And this is the second one. So I could call that two thirds here. But if I, we know we can take thirds and chop them up into sixths, right? So that's and that would be and I'm going to label these 0, 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6. Now you might be on to the trick by, of looking at the numerators and denominators and saying, well, if I want to use a different fractional unit, I could just cut all the fractions in half and have twice as many equal parts so that means I'm doubling the number of equal parts I have so instead of thirds I have six then I also double the numerators because if I have two thirds it's going to be it's going to take twice as many sixths so I have to double if I'm going to double the denominator I have to double the numerator now it doesn't say you have to um, 
right? It says to write two different fraction names for the dot on the number line. And it doesn't say you have to label every fraction on the number line. So if you're onto this trick, then you, you're comfortable using it. And go ahead and use it. Um, this looks like, but if you're if, if it's working for you to label all the fractions and count the fractional units, then keep doing it. All right, so this is one, two, three, four equal parts. So this is one, right, that's zero fourths, and that's one fourth. And down here, if I cut these into all the fourths in half, of course, like if you take fourths in a fraction, a strip of paper, and you fold the fourths in half, you get eighths, and there's twice as many of them. So that would be zero eighths, one eighth it'd be the same as two eighths and i'm going to stop labeling there because that's where the dot is and that's as far as i have to go so one fourth is the same as two eighths and now here remember this starts at one so we're not going to start at zero what we have what do we have here we have one two three four equal parts so that's fourths right so this one would be four fourths and then five fourths six fourths that's seven fourths so you might have thought it was three fourths but it's really seven fourths because the endpoint starts at one and now i can chop these into eighths just like i did above there'll be twice as many eighths as there are fourths and I'm going to label those. This would be eight eighths and nine eighths and ten eighths, eleven eighths, twelve eighths, thirteen eighths, fourteen eighths. So seven fourths is equal to. 14 eighths and you might notice that 8 is double 4 and 14 is double 7 and here we're starting at 1 again very tricky we have 1 2 3 4 5 equal parts so we're talking about fifths and one whole is 5 fifths 6 fifths 7 fifths is where the dot is and let's keep on our plan of dividing these in halves to find an equivalent unit. So there, make marks in the middle. So now these are going to be tenths because it's going to take ten of these. There's going to be twice as many of them in between two whole numbers. So these are tenths. And you can count them, uh, the marks I just made. Uh, but So this is a one, so it's going to start with... 10 tenths, 11 tenths, 12 tenths, 13 tenths, 14 tenths. And you can see here that the 10 is double 5 and 14 is double 7. Danielle and Mandy each ordered a large pizza for dinner. Danielle's pizza was cut into sixths and Mandy's pizza was cut into twelfths. Danielle ate two sixths of her pizza. Mandy wants to eat the same amount as Danielle, but how many slices of pizza will she have to eat? Write the answer as a fraction. So we're not going to say how many slices. We're going to say what the fraction of a pizza is in our answer. Draw a number line. So we have to draw a number line, all right. So they each have one pizza, right? So we could do this. You could do it with one number line, but I'm going to draw two. And we'll start with, say, zero to one whole pizza. And this is Danielle's pizza, and this is Mandy's pizza. Uh, it might this might actually work out better if you use the same number line since that's what we've been practicing but i'm going to use two let's see danielle's is cut into sixths so we need sixths 
I, I make six by starting in half and making each half into thirds because it's just easier to get pieces that look like they're equal when you do it that way. That's what works for me. Uh, and now, so that's going to be sixths, right? I'm going to label these. All right, and you can see my numerators. I just go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm counting six. Now, Mandy uh, is cut into twelfths. Uh, hold on, Danielle 826. So I'm just going to mark that there. So Mandy, Mandy's pizza is cut into twelfths. So it takes two twelfths to make a sixth. Right? If I want 12 equal parts, there's the halfway. And now I have to make sixths out of each half. And I'm going to really just look at where the thirds are. I mean, look at where the sixths are and then make marks at the midpoints. So it's like take, making a fraction strip of sixths or thirds and folding them in half and then folding the sixth in half to get twelfths. So there's twelve. That should be, that's twelve equal parts. And I'm now time to label those. Okay, so now those are all labeled. And you'll notice if you look at the numerators, they just go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, now, I went a little bit farther than I had to, but really, because I only had to go as far as Danielle went for her 2, 6. I could have just stopped labeling them all right there, because that's really all I needed. Uh, just, but it, it, I think it helps to show that there's 12 equal parts, and that, 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 that the two lines match up like that. So this shows that 2 6 is equivalent to 4 twelfths. Okay, so we drew a number line that explains our answer, and I have to write the answer as a fraction. Mandy must eat. And I have to write it as a fraction. I can't see how many slices of pizza. Four twelfths of a large pizza. And by the way, those are both equal to one third.